Hello, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Michelle Beck, and welcome to Breast Friends Cancer Support Network. I am a two-time nine-year survivor of breast cancer. I'm the patient programs assistant at Breast Friends of Oregon, and when I have time, I write at a blog called I Never Liked Pink. So my guest today is Christina Urson. I found her by stalking social media. I was literally scrolling through my Instagram feed, and I saw her. She was in a a reel, which I still haven't figured out how to do with the Brobes founder, Allison Schickel, who was my guest back here in June of 2021. And I was so intrigued because Allison was really working with Christina on the mechanics of starting and, and running a small business, which I thought is amazing, but more so because Christina is a member of our cancer club, you know, the one that no one wants to join, but has the best members. And she is working on making a clothesline for women who've gone through breast cancer, whether they're flat, unilateral, double, having problems with lymphedema or dealing with chemo or, or whatever. She really is wants to honor and help all of us feel beautiful again, because it's something we really struggle with after going through treatment. She has found beauty through the pain and wants to help others do the same. And we had a long conversation a few weeks ago, and I love this woman. We just became fast friends. She's passionate and strong and resilient. And I'm so happy to have her here today. So welcome, Christina. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Yeah, so tell us, um, a short little bit about yourself, non-cancer, because we'll get into that part. Well, before cancer, I worked at Tulsa Community College. I was in the um, vice president's office for, for se several years. Um, I used to power lift. I loved shopping, um, had just a great kind of unexciting life. <laughs> and then that quickly changed. <laughs> yeah, that that cancer does that to all of us. Now, since we've talked previously, I know, you know, I know what you've gone through, but start, tell our listeners how a little bit about your cancer journey. And let's start with your initial, you know, non-diagnosis type thing that happens. <laughs> Well, I was diagnosed, my cancer versi versary is actually coming up <laughs> February 20th. Um, I was diagnosed in 2019 and um, it was weird how I found it. Like I had gotten out of the shower and just turned a certain way. And then I saw this lump pop out of my left breast. I went to work and um, two of my girlfriends, they were like, um, you probably need to get that checked out. And I was like, uh, no, crazy. Because you're young. How, how, how old were you at I diagnosis? I was 35. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was healthy. I was eating green things. I was power <laughs> lifting. I was like, what do you mm -hmm. mean check this out? Like, no, it's obviously nothing. And then a few weeks later, they told me, you know, have you made an appointment to get it checked out? And I like, like fine, whatever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was like, um, annoying much. And so to quiet the peanut gallery, I didn't even know where to go because mm -hmm. I had never had a lump. So I was like, I guess I go to the gynecologist, mm -hmm. made an appointment and I was sure it was nothing, you know, and went in and he checked me out and he walked out of the room after he felt the lump and came back and he said, I need to send you to get scans. And I was like, you know, that's weird. Like it's nothing. Like, why would I need to get scans mm -hmm. again? I'm 35. And so I went, it was maybe a few days later. I went to get a mammogram, which those are not fun. Um, not fun, but very important. <laughs> very important yes and and ultrasound and I went with one of my girlfriends and the radiologist came down after everything and said I see nothing that's any cause for concern you're fine and so my friend and I high-fived we went and had nachos and margaritas to you know because we were so excited yeah and and then about a week or so later, I got a letter in the mail saying your scans came back, you know, not fine. And I was like, what the fuck? You... Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was like, are you serious? Because the radiologist literally came down to tell me you're fine. So the nurse, they said that they wanted to do an MRI. So the nurse came and 
uh, well, the nurse called me and she was like, we need to schedule an MRI. And I, you know, was like, you're dumb. You don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. And he told me I was fine. Um, had to call back the next day and apologize for being a crazy person. But I went, I got the MRI and then I got the letter about a week later, your scans are not okay. We need to schedule a biopsy. And so then I started to wonder, like, am I fine? Yeah. Like what is really going on here? Because no one can seem to make up their mind and they're not communicating with you properly at all. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went in to get the biopsy. They took biopsies at 11 o'clock and four o'clock. How they take biopsies. That's how they take biopsies on your boob. And, um, Oh, I was thinking times. I'm like 11 and four. Why did they make you wait so long? Never mind. The, 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 the clock positions on your boob. I got yeah. it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so took, took the, um, they took the biopsies. And the next day I was flying to see my family in Florida. And I was like, please call me and don't like make me wait a week or whatever. And so, you know, I was getting ready to go to Florida. I was like, this is all going to be behind me. It's going to be okay. We're going to celebrate in Florida because this is obviously nothing. So phone call time came and uh, my family, we were all on the couch and the nurse was like, you have invasive ductal carcinoma. And I was, I like, I'm like, invasive, what? You're like, what? I have no idea what that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, are you speaking English? Like, no, it's a whole new language. It is. And so I was like, are you saying I have cancer? And she said, yes. And then honestly, I blacked out after that. I literally Mm -hmm. don't remember anything else um, of that conversation. I know she was still talking. I can't tell you what she said. Um, and we went and, uh, my family, they're big, like health food nuts. And we went, uh, we went that night and I was like, I want ice cream and brownies. (laughs) And, and so, um, we went to go get some ice cream and brownies. I saw these girls that were outside of the place we were going. They were like taking selfies and like laughing and, I wanted to break their phone and their faces because my life had just stopped. Mm -hmm. And like, how are people happy right now? Obviously they had no idea. I just, I was hurting so badly, you know? And yeah, things just spiraled like super quickly after that. And it's weird going from like the biggest thing you have to choose, you know, what do I want for lunch today to, you know, if you go this way, you could die. If you go this way, you could have this side effect. If you go, you know, and you're like, what, you know, because I never thought it would happen to me. You know, your brain just goes crazy. You're like, am I going to lose my breasts? Am I going to lose my hair? Am I going to die? You know, and, and it's just, it's, it's crazy. And yeah. hard. And- it is. And you have so much anger to process and yeah. you're trying to process that anger, but then you you're going into treatment. So what did your eventual treatment plan actually look like? Well, so on the way back from Florida, I got a phone call from the plastic surgery office and they were like, we want to talk to you about your breast removal. And I like freaking had a meltdown in the airport. I was like, no one's even talked to me. You know, um, am I like, do I not have a voice? Um, so I got back and, uh, a few of the things that, that she did was, um, she, with my age, they wanted to do a test. Is it genetic or Mm -hmm. was it by chance? Mm -hmm. So, um, they did the test and I had what's called a P10 gene mutation, which puts you at risk for breast, thyroid, colon, kidney, I think uterine and skin. And the doctor was like, don't you feel so much better knowing all that? And I was like, (laughs) no, no. (laughs) like, Yes, you've, you've given, you've given me knowledge, but knowledge that there's all these things in my body that are now at risk. And how am I supposed to deal with this? Exactly. So she told me, she said, 
you know, cause at the time I wanted to keep my breasts. I was like, this is like part of me. And she, we were in the office and she said, I'm going to stand on my head and, and block you from leaving until you say, you know, I, I need to take them both, you know, mm. I need, and I, you know, I didn't feel like I had a voice. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I moved forward with that. Then I got another phone call and they were like, well, we're going to schedule your chemo appointments. And I was like, why is no one asking me what I want? Like, you guys get to check a box and that's fine. You know, she has cancer. We do chemo. We do radiation. We do that, you know, but I'm the one that has to live with the results. Mm -hmm. So I told the doctor, I said, you know, I need a voice at the table. So uh, as a seat at the table. So we, we didn't end up doing chemo. Um, I decided against it. I ended up having both breasts removed, had uh, radiation, and um, that, and so I get a shot every day also because my cancer, or not every day, w- once a month, because mm-hmm. my cancer was hormone fed. So they shut down my hormones. Mm-hmm. So um, it has been an interesting journey. It definitely has. And, and we'll talk about this more, but you, you had your breast removed and then you opted to have reconstruction because it sounds like they weren't really even giving you lots of choices, but then you went through and your reconstruction failed twice. Twice. (laughs) I, I I just, the, I don't know statistics on this, but it, the whole process, I mean, from what little I know about your process, your, your medical team was not discussing things with you properly, which is a nightmare. They're taking away your choice and a lot of things. And then you have your reconstruction fail. What, how did you feel at that time? You know, when you go through something that's like so painful, you always want to see an end. Mm-hmm. And and when it, the reconstruction failed not once but twice, it was heartbreaking because yeah. it was like I lost my breasts all over again. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. But this journey has moved you into a place where you are doing something so amazing for yourself and for other women. We are going to take a quick break, but we're going to really get into that a lot more afterwards. So listeners, remember you can make a donation on our website or by texting BF radio to 41444 to ensure that women do not go through cancer alone. You can go on our website and check out our patient programs to see what breast friends can do for you. Stay with us. We'll be back with Christina in just a minute. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Michelle Beck, and my guest is Christina Urson, Thriver, who is helping women who have gone through breast cancer to help them be seen and heard and to feel beautiful. Before break, we were talking about how Christina has gone through a really challenging treatment journey, and she had reconstruction and it failed twice. So tell us, looking, how did you find the strength and resilience to move forward after this time? Uh, a lot of times I didn't. Uh, I mean, if I'm being completely honest, mm-hmm. there were there were times that I would be in the fetal position on my living room floor crying so hard, no sound would come out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I told God, I was like, when am I enough? You know, I need to, uh, you know, uh, we're taught that you you know, you need breasts to be beautiful. And I no longer had them. And I was like this, you know, am I beautiful? Am I attractive? Am I broken? You know, is anyone ever going to want to marry me? You know, I'm single and I don't have a boyfriend, you know, and so through, you know, there were a lot of prayers, a lot of tears, family, friends. um, And honestly, the breast cancer community, they're just, like none other just rallied around me and held my hand. And, you know, there were good days and bad days, but, um, it was, it was hard and, and to, to have, you know, to go through the beginning of the journey, thinking that you were at least going to have them replaced and given back to you Mm -hmm. to know that, okay, I'm not going to have anything there. Um, there were struggles with self-esteem and body issues and, 
Um, it was definitely a day by day process and a lot of grief that I was not prepared to walk through. No one really tells you that even, even sometimes if you have reconstruction, you have grief over the loss of your breasts exactly. and like I, it's taken me a long time. I'm five years out from my reconstruction surgery and it's still some days I was like, oh gosh, you know, I, I miss my old breasts and I do, I feel grief over them, but also to have, to have that taken away completely because your choice was, oh, you can try again in a hyperbaric chamber, which we've talked about previously. And that is just nutty. I mean, I appreciate they were trying to help you get some sort of reconstruction, but you originally opted to stay flat and that all those emotions, but you've, you've processed through that anger and all of these things Thank and you, therapy. Yeah. Oh God. hundred percent <laughs> recommend therapy for everyone, yes. especially people who've gone through cancer, because it's really hard to process yep. it. You know, I can talk about it all the time now because I'm five years out, but early on I was a hot mess. And, you know, some people would say, oh, we're out of milk. And I would start to cry. And, you know, it just, it affects your whole life. But one thing from our previous conversation, we really talked about it, this forced you to become your own advocate because you weren't given a lot of choices. And then you were like, no, this is what I'm going to do. And you were going to talk about this. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, it was interesting because in the very beginning of the journey, before I had like any surgeries, any, anything, I went to a breast cancer support group called random group of gals and everyone around the table said, I wish I would have advocated for myself. I wish I would have stuck up for myself. And I didn't really understand what that meant. I do now, mm -hmm. um, just because things just move so quickly. And I feel like that sometimes doctors forget that we're human too. And cancer is not like a one size fits all. Like there's a face behind this cancer, you know, there's emotions behind, you know, what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for you. And so I started telling the doctors, I was like, we're going to slow down, you know, we're, I, I need you to explain to me why you want to do this. I need, you know, I need a voice. I need a seat at the table. Like I'm the one that has to live with it. So we're going to take our time to come to, you know, um, choices about the different treatments. And that, that needs to be okay because I need to be comfortable and I move slower than I think that they would have liked, but I'm glad that I did that just because looking back, I know I made every choice correct correctly because mm -hmm. I didn't rush myself and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, so with the choice on going flat, they, you know, they had told me, they said, well, um, after the second failed reconstruction attempt, they were like, well, we can put you in the hyperbaric chamber two hours a day, every day for six months, but that won't be a guarantee that you heal. And I was like well, a shell of a person at this point. Yeah. Like, and, who, and who's got the time for that? <laughs> thank you. I was like, I had a full-time job at this point. I was like, what? Thank you. And they said, my other option is you could do what's called the lat flap surgery, where they go in, um, cut your back, detach your lat muscle, pull it around for good tissue. And me being like super active and in, you know, in the weight room a lot, that wasn't something that worked for me. If it worked for someone else, great, you mm -hmm. know, but it wasn't for me. So I told them, I said, we're going to pull up, we're going to go flat. And they were like, well, most people don't do that. You know, most people, Screw and, most people, thank you. I was like, well, this is my journey and we're going to go flat. And then the other thing that we're going to do after that is you're going to give me areola tattoos. And they said, well, we don't, we've never tattooed flat. And I said, well, I'm going to be your first. Yeah. Like I told, so, I don't care what you've never done. <laughs> I know it's skin. You can do it. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, it, so yeah, I, I went flat and, um, and thought, you know, after the areola tattoos that that was going to be my final, <laughs> final bit with cancer. <laughs> it wasn't surprise I know surprise we're back you know but it was uh cancer patients ask me a lot now like do you have any advice navigating treatment 
And the only thing that I would tell them is take your time. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're going to be like, we got to move now, you know, run, we got to do this. And if you're not comfortable, it's okay to question. If you're not comfortable, it's okay to seek understanding just because mm-hmm. it's like learning a new language, you know, yes. with, with all the words and all the processes that you go through. And, and it's okay to take your time until you are comfortable with a decision and you make the decision with your doctor. You just answered my next question. So <laughs> okay. I was like, what, what treatment advice do you have? And it's really funny because like, I've had great oncology teams and, you know, being in it for almost 10 years now, but the, not all people in the oncology community are people, people they're good at, you know, eradicating the cancer, d- dealing with the treatment. And they're not always the best about having the conversations that we would like them to have and which understandable that's, you know, everybody has their specialties, but for us as patients, you really have to stop and question anything that you are unfamiliar with or need more explanations on. And like for your decision to not have chemo, we talked earlier, they were doing an oncotype test Mm -hmm. and, and you were, you were borderline and I was borderline as well on my second diagnosis. And I, I did the same thing. And I said, no, and I feel like I've made the right decision at this point. And you just, but you have to have all that information and So I want to switch over from treatment to the exciting thing that has now come up because of your cancer journey. So through all of this, you were working a full-time job at the college. You were a project manager, a good job, but it didn't make your heart sing. And inklings had started to come in from friends and family that you should start a clothing line. And you did not have experience in this at all. So um, how did that feel? Uh weird. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I've during that time, so I was like, okay, God, what am I doing with my life? You know, this was like right before cancer. I was like, what am I doing with my life? Where are we going with this? And um, two of my girlfriends and I were going to have a Daniel fast. And they said, well, what should we pray for, for you? And I was like, my future, my job, my career, you know, and the last day of the Daniel fast, I got cancer. And I was like, um, this is not what we were praying for. I was like, are we lost? (laughs) Did someone pray the, like, how, how did this just happen? Did you pray the wrong way? (laughs) I know. And, and so it was interesting because Um, A week before I was diagnosed with cancer, one of my girlfriends had a dream about me and I was speaking at a fashion show and everything was pink. And she woke up and she was like, I hate pink and Christina doesn't really like, like pink. This doesn't make sense. A week later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. A year before I was diagnosed with breast cancer, you know, I told you I was working at the college Mm -hmm. and the vice president came in and she said, you know, I had a dream about you when you, I came to visit you at your next. And I was like, okay, crazy, you know? And she said, it was a fashion house and you owned everything. And the next night I had a similar dream and I was like, okay, God, what are we doing here? So fast forward, I was diagnosed with cancer. I told you about my girlfriend having the dream about uh, me speaking at a fashion show. Um, I got a phone call from my best friend and she said, you know, I, I just can't help but feel like you walking through this is going to bring you to your next. And I was like, I'm in pain, stop, you know, and because when you're going through treatment or that's the only thing you can think about, your head has exploded. Exactly. You're you're like, okay, I just need to get through each day. I need to get through my treatment. I I mean, you can barely process getting dressed every day, let alone your, the next half of your life. Exactly. And silver lining, not ready to hear it. Yeah. And my aunt called me after my best friend did. And she was like, you know, do you have ears to hear me? And I was like, what now? And she said, you know, um, she said, God's been talking to me and said that you walking through this is going to propel you in business further than you've ever dreamed. And I was like, 
I don't have ears to hear you. I'm just in pain. So fast forward, I had, you know, surgery, had both breasts taken. My mom called me and was like, I feel like you're supposed to start a clothing line for women with breast cancer. And I feel like it's supposed to be called Bayo. Bayo stands for breasts are overrated. (laughs) And I was like, still not there too soon. So then, um, you know, later on, once my emotions started calming down, I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to write this business plan, you know, just see what it's about. Just because I was struggling with clothing. I didn't know where to go. I went to Target, you know, before my first surgery to get a triple X nightgown and I didn't know. And then my body, I'm watching my body change like through treatment and I'm already feeling bad, but it made me feel worse that things didn't fit and things Mm -hmm. didn't look right. And it just felt very out of my control. So I was like, okay, I'm going to write this business plan. So I did. Then, um, another friend called me and she said, um, she said, uh, my, she said, I had a dream and actually it was my boyfriend that had the dream and he called me and he said, she's a jewelry designer in New York. And he called her and said, you know, babe, I saw your stuff in a show, but it wasn't your show and everything was pink. And I, and she goes, call Christina. And I was like, okay. So wrote the business plan and, and I was like, I prayed over it. And I was like, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm willing, not happy with you right now, God, because I'm in so much pain, you know, but I'm, I'm going to do it. And so then fast forward, like I'm in a yoga class and I, I sat down. What is that? Shavasana? Shavasana. I, that's my favorite part. <laughs> uh, yeah. i I love me sh- some Shavasana. So <laughs> sat down, closed my eyes and the next thing I know, I'm watching this TV and this woman came on and she said, I'm strong. The second woman came on and said, I'm brave. This third woman came on and said, I'm newly diagnosed. And this fourth woman came on and said, I'm a survivor. And then all four came on and said, we are Bayo. Mm. So I start hysterically crying in yoga, yoga class, like a complete psychopath. And was I think like, that happens more often than you know. <laughs> But I was like, okay, so there's something to this. So, um, but I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where to begin. So then I'm outside Whole Foods and God was like, your models will be breast cancer patients. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, I am a breast cancer patient. I want this made for breast cancer patients. So um, then, um, you know, I was working on it and um, then cancer came back and metastasized to my spine. So that took priority for, Mm -hmm. you know, for that time, just to kind of battle that, but um, because you didn't have enough on your plate. Exactly. (laughs) But then with that calming down, I called Allison and was like, meant the bro lady uh-huh. in Austin. And I was like, mentor me. I don't know what I'm doing, but I feel like I'm supposed to create this clothing line for women, you know? And she was like, sure, come on. And I was like, um, actually, can I come visit you? And she was like, yes, you know, come on. And so, um, it's been interesting, the people that I've been meeting lately, you know, I've had people reaching out. I'm a designer, you know, I want to help you. I'm a gra- you know, I'm in graphic design. You know, I feel like I'm supposed to help you. Um, I, I just got, um, two orders put in for two different prototype shirts. And, nice. and so she was like, I say no to everyone, but I'm supposed to help you. And I was like, okay, there's something here. So I'm just trying to follow it. Well, it really, from our conversations and your family history, your, your father and your brother, both pastors, is that correct? Yeah. You, you, you're very spiritual and it's, it feels like all of these signs were being like, you were being bombarded with the signs and that has really, your faith has helped you get through and start planning on this extra or the next part of your life, not the extra part. This is now your main focus. Um, cause you're no, you, you, in this process, you also got laid off from the college because of COVID 
uh, you know, and it's, it's like, what, you know, can there be any more direction to the fact that this is what I'm supposed to be doing? Exactly. And, you know, after everything, I was like, okay, God, you have my attention. And, you know, what I want with this is this is my love letter to the community, to the breast cancer community, because they're a strong group of women. They deserve to feel seen, heard, and thought and feel thought of when when they try this stuff on. And this is my love letter to them. Oh, that is so beautiful. I love that. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I <laughs> just like it, it, it's still like the, the whole process of it and what you've taken from your, your journey and turning it into, into Bayo, which, and breasts are overrated, which I, is just hilarious. Uh, <laughs> that is so perfect. And we're going to talk more about it when we get back from our break. So again, listeners stay with us. But I want to remind you, if you would like to send me your warrior story or be a guest on my show, please email me at Michelle Beck at breastfriends.org. And I would love to, to hear what you've got going on. So stay with us. We'll be back soon. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Michelle Beck and my guest is Christina Erson. And we are talking about her journey and how she is working to help women impacted by breast cancer feel beautiful by creating this amazing clothing line. And so before break, we were talking about all the signs that led you to this place, but yeah, you have an MBA. Is that correct? Yes. So you, you definitely have some business acumen, but did you have any real early guidance or, you know, financial assistance? Because this all costs money making prototypes and figuring this out. So how, how did that work? I'm still trying to figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) There. So after Al Allison, I got back to Tulsa and um, there were two male entrepreneurs that live in Colorado Springs that are family friends. And they called me and they said, we feel like we're supposed to fly to Tulsa, sit around the table with you and hammer out the business aspect of this. And then one of the guys grabbed the phone and he was like, you know, you see where we are. They're both super wealthy. And they said, my dad gave me a thousand dollars to start my business and, and we're going to give you two. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much. So they came and yeah, and yeah, I, after I, that's going to help me cover the prototypes. And then Mm -hmm. my plan after that is I am going to launch a Kickstarter campaign. And, um, and so that's a crowdfunding to, to hopefully get me to be able to move to the next aspect of this because you're right all this does cost money I'm just trying to put one foot in front of the other and and because I do believe this is supposed to be a thing I do believe that our community especially in the clothing aspect is underserved and and I think that that's terrible and it makes me angry you know I I remember after I had had my breast removed looking in the mirror dry heaving after I saw myself Mm -hmm. and I looked at my mom and I said I look like a monster who's gonna want me now I said that to my doctor about a week later and she said if I had a dollar for every one of you guys that said that to me I would be a billionaire and it just made me mad I was like Mm -hmm. cancer has taken so much from me it shouldn't be able to take that too you know and so is this a band-aid yes but these women are just amazing and just deserve to be respected. And, you know, I keep having these dreams of them walking these runways and raising their hands in triumph as they walk. And so I, I'm just trying to put one foot in front of the other and, you know, big picture with this, I, you know, I want this to end up being kind of a one-stop clothing shop for women with breast cancer, because Mm -hmm. I didn't know where to go, you know, and there are certain needs that I have now after cancer that I didn't have before. Sure. And, and with my body changing that I didn't have control over, I've never, you know, dealt with that before and clothing shouldn't be frustrating too. Right. You know, so it's yeah. frustrating enough when, when all of our parts are there, you know, especially like trying on a bathing, a bathing suit or something like that. But so are you envisioning the line to be just for 
for women who have gone flat or what are your thoughts on this? Um, I want it to be multifaceted. So I want um, flat, obviously. Um, my aunt had breast cancer and she just had one breast removed. And after her surgery, she went to like five or six different shops and called me and she said, what are you doing? We need you. And so I was like, okay. Um, I know lymphedema is an issue. Mm -hmm. I, I saw, um, I was in the treatment room the other day and no, I didn't have drip chemo. I'm on a chemo pill, but I didn't have drip chemo, but I was just curious and looked at the chemo shirts and I was like, these are disgusting who I already feel like crap. Why would I want to put this on too? Mm -hmm. So I would like it to cover multiple needs. And I understand that one garment can't cover every need, but I would like to be making multiple garments with an understanding of what these women have gone through. And so I've been, I've been reaching out to, because I understand my story is not everyone's story. So I've been reaching out to different women that have gone through breast cancer, you know, what's frustrating for you. And I, let me tell you, they give you an earful and, yes. and it's just a wealth of knowledge, you know, and I take notes. Okay. We don't like this. We like that, you know? And, and so I, it's, it's been, it's been a great to connect with them and I'm just hoping to give them the respect that they deserve and have these beautiful garments that they just feel like just pretty on and look in the mirror and smile instead of dry heave like I did. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I remember that dry heaving, um, and you know, post mastectomy and in the shower, like, you know, the, the first look and feeling that it's, it's awful. So if I was able to put on something that, you know, made me feel beautiful again and, and whole and sexy, that would be amazing because it's something that's really missing right now in the, the clothing community for women impacted by breast cancer. Now I love, I love the name. So Bayo, you said your mom came up with that. She did. She okay. called me and she, she had said, you know, I feel like you're supposed to start a clothing line for women. I feel like it's supposed to be called Bayo breasts are overrated, you know, and I've shared that with women that have gone through cancer and they've actually been somewhat offended by the name. And I was like, that's fine. It's not for you. This is for the breast cancer community. <laughs> yeah. And even though I went through and had reconstruction, I, I can understand that, that, you know, that name. And I, I think it's amazing because there, our breasts are not who we are. They're exactly, they're how we are taught by society that this is part of our womanhood, but it's not our, our womanhood is in our soul and in our heart and in our brain. So help you helping these women who've gone through such a traumatic experience is amazing. And so where are you at in the project right now? Well, I met Friday with um, this seamstress and she is phenomenal. And she, she told me the last time I met with her, she said, Christina, I get approached all the time by people trying to help you know, that want me to help them make clothing lines. And she said, I always say no. And she looked at me and she said, but I'm supposed to help you. And I said, okay. I said, um, so I met with her, we talked about fabric. And, you know, I, and I was talking to her, I was like, I'm not a designer, you know, business, I understand, you mm -hmm. know, but help me. And, and she's amazing. So we talked through fabric, I told her kind of what I wanted to see. So she's working on two prototypes currently. Um, I, and then after that, I'm going to hire a videographer to film kind of what I'm wanting to do, mm -hmm. launch that Kickstarter campaign. Um, then I have a lady in Colorado Springs that actually reached out to my brother and said, I do graphic design, you know, I do um, social media stuff. Is there anything that you need help with for, uh, for what he was doing? And he said, no, but talk to Christina. Yeah, but my sister does. <laughs> yeah. So her and I talked and she said, I, I wasn't supposed to be working with your brother. I'm supposed to work with you. And she said, she was like, 
I would be honored to, to work with you. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm just trying to put one foot in front of the other and want this to just be a really beautiful thing for the community. So I'm, I'm just trying to be open. People keep kind of popping up out of the woodworks, meet this person, you know, come mm -hmm. here, look at this fabric, come here and trying to follow leads because I can see the end. I'm just trying, you know, but I'm not totally sure how to get there if I'm being completely honest. Well, but you, these people keep coming into your life. The, the family, friends, the entrepreneurs who, who started your original $2,000 and the connections that keep showing up, they're coming for a reason. Yeah. And these people are, have been put into your life for a reason. And I, I hope I'm part of that as well, because I mean, like I um, said, MC? I was, <laughs> I, MC yes, of the fashion show? I'm, I'm going to be emceeing the fashion show listeners. So we'll, <laughs> I've never been to Oklahoma, but if that's where it is, I will go there. <laughs> um, but it's, I, the, the breast cancer community is amazing, but these people outside of the community that are coming to help you, I think is so spectacular at this point, because it's, you have the idea and the heart and the passion, but you need help to get there. Exactly. And that's, that is why it's so important. So how can the breast cancer community support you? I know you haven't started the Kickstarter yet, but is there anything that we can do in addition to what's going on right now? I want to hear from you what you want to see, because my whole thing with this is I want you to feel seen. I want you to feel heard. And I want you to feel like your needs have been met. I want you to feel valued. And that that's my heart behind this. And so in doing so, I have ears to hear you. And I want to hear what you want to see, because every woman I have found has had such, you know, they've all been like, oh, you know, let me tell you about clothes. I want to hear, I want to connect with you. And um, can I tell them like my email and how to? Yeah, totally. Your call. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please email me. I want to connect with you. My email is Christina Urson, one word at yahoo.com. And I want to hear your story and I want to, I want to understand your needs so that I can meet them. I love that. And we can also, listeners can also follow you on Instagram. I know you're not posting a lot yet, but yeah. um, I know. Um, so it's Urson C mm -hmm. on Instagram. So um, listeners, please feel free to reach out and talk to Christina and let her know what you need, because having that, that information is, is really going to help for everything. Um, so what do you, I know you have the, tell me about the prototypes. What, what kind of clothing are they? Um, right now, you know, I had in my head in the beginning of this, because I love dresses. I was like, yeah, dresses. And I started talking to women and they were like, no, we need <laughs> tops. Mm -hmm. We are having so many problems with tops. And so I can't, hear that and then continue with dresses you sure. know they're telling me what they want so right now um we are working on two different tops and the thing with this is it needs to be functional but flattering mm -hmm. you know um when i'm when i'm googling breast cancer shirts you know it's this big oversized shirt with barney on it you know and i'm like right what am I supposed to do with that? You know, yeah. I'm going to be embarrassed to be seen in public. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and so we're, we're working on the um, two, two shirts. Then I'm going to start reaching out to people in the breast cancer community, try this on, you know, tear it apart. What can we change? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how can we make this better for you? And then just continue to be making tops and, and go from there. Obviously I would love to expand it, but right now mm -hmm. I've heard them and they've said they want tops. So if you do do dresses, when you get there, pockets, the dresses must have pockets. I agree. <laughs> I love me a pocket sister. <laughs> I know my, my current yoga pants that I have on don't have pockets. And so I was like, ah, where am I going to put my phone? And then I'm always like, okay, how do I stick my phone in my pants? Cause you know, I can't put it in my tank top. Cause that's, that's bad. Uh I, let me tell you, I was wearing yoga pants yesterday at the gym and I put my phone kind of down the back. It started falling like inside my <laughs> pants. And I was like, uh, okay, so get you on the pockets thing. Totally. I'm, to I'm totally with you. 
<laughs> Sorry, I just. <laughs> It was real awkward, and I was glad no one was around. I, I, have, I have, came down my pants. I have definitely had moments like that. And so, listeners, obviously, Christina, she is tall and and thin. So she also probably you've always had a hard time finding clothes, I imagine. Um, yes, because when you're like a Sasquatch of a person, clothes are made for smaller people. So, so yes. yeah, well, they're made for us, uh, you know, a, a size eight and, you know, five, five, which <laughs> very few women are in this world. And you can't say Sasquatch because I'm from the Pacific Northwest. So <laughs> <laughs> you are a beautiful woman, not the crazy Bigfoot. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I understand that. And like, for me, I just turned 50. I don't know where to go to clothes shop. So if, if I had something that was, you know, a line that was like, okay, this is really made for me, you know, even though I have reconstruction or whatever, like I would go there hundred percent because also you want to support the businesses that have been started and created by women who've been impacted by by cancer. So just the community, like I said earlier, it's what you want. You never want to join, but it has the best members. So you're, you know, figuring really all does. of this out, you know, and there there's been too many times that I've been in the dressing room sobbing mm -hmm. and I was like, this is not okay. And, you know, looking and looking and looking for options. And if you can't find a need, you need to be the need. So, and, and meet that need. Well, it's really funny because until you and I had spoken and I had never really thought about it, but women's shirts are made, excuse me, for the, the protrusion of breasts they and they're made with that fabric there. And so for those of you who are flat, it's, it's, you kind of need a, a man style shirt without the, without the protrusion in front, but it needs to be pretty. Exactly. <laughs> we don't, we don't want to wear t-shirts all the time or just plain button up shirts, which, you know, they tell you to go buy button up shirts before you're going in for your surgeries, but you need to find something that makes you feel beautiful. Exactly. You know, and, and just some good options. I don't want the oversized Barney shirt option, you know, and, and these, these women, you know, I, they are just, a a unique group that I have just fallen in love with. When I first started the journey, one of the nurses was like, the, you're, so you're breast cancer? And I was like, yeah. And um, she said, you guys are different. And she's, and I asked her, you know, I was like, how so? And she said, you guys like seek each other out. And it's just, you guys are different from any other type of cancer. I kind of blew her off, but she's right. It's mm -hmm. true. It is. And the, the support that I have found through breast friends and, and other organizations, and hopefully that I'm, you know, we're working on here through this podcast is we get it. We we've been there. We're anything that we can do to help the other women who are, are going through. And then, and there is, there is obviously a small population of men who go there as well. And they do have yeah. their own support. I'm actually having two men on later in the year, but nice. it's, um, it's, I never knew that I could find this amazing group of people after I was diagnosed. Exactly. And they, I mean, they didn't even know me through some of this, you know, before when I was just diagnosed, a woman, I didn't know who was a survivor, met me at Starbucks and held my hand for two hours while I just cried. Mm -hmm. And so that's continually what I've found from this community. And so why not meet this clothing need for them when they've done so much for me? I love that so much. So listeners, remember, email Christina at Christina Urson at yahoo.com or follow her on Urson C on Instagram for future updates for when the Kickstarter campaign is ready. And I will definitely talk about it and post it here. But Christina, again, thank you so much for being here today. It has been my pleasure and I cannot wait to be the MC for your fashion show. Yay! It's been an honor. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so listeners out there, if you or a loved one need our services, please visit breastfriends.org. You can make a donation on our website or by texting BF radio to 41444 to help ensure that no woman goes through cancer alone. You can find our show on many platforms on Voice America's health and wellness channel or your favorite podcast platform. You can search Breast Friends or Michelle Beck and we will come up. And if you would like to nominate yourself to be a guest or share your warrior story of inspiration 
or what you have done that is amazing after cancer, please email me at michellebeck at breastfriends.org. We'll be back next week. And until then, remember, we rise by lifting each other.